Sean Monaghan, and uh, I have the uh, honor of filling uh, Colt's shoes, his uh, formal boots these days, uh, over here at Cabrillo Teaching Mold Making and uh, Bronze Casting. Um, I'm an artist, I have a foundry as well, and um, a lot of what's made me who I am uh, is certainly is a result of uh, knowing Colt. Hi, I'm Steve Rudzinski, and we're at the Davenport Gallery, and I'm putting a little finishing wax and touch up on a piece that uh, I did uh, in Holt Murray's class uh, when I uh, started there in the early 70s. Hello, my name is Dellen Pizzoni and uh, I'm a bronze sculptor. This piece that I'm working on, it started back in the early 90s. It was a piece that was a waste mold and Holt Murray's mold making class. My connection with Holt goes back to the early 70s, I guess, and uh, took a couple of his sculpture classes, and uh, I kind of never got into the bronze thing. I, I considered a bronzini because I took his bronze class, but I got into the terrazzini, I guess. So <laughs> he, he taught me about terrazzo, and the last 10 or 15 years of my life have been making concrete things, so I have to thank him for that. It was spring semester when Holt offered a bronze casting. So I wandered in there and, uh, wow, discovered this amazing scene uh, that, that, uh, that Holt had over there with Steve Rzinski pouring bronze and, and Kirk Ainsworth on the other end of the shank and uh, a lot of enthusiastic students and uh, really uh, fans of Holt and uh, really an amazing uh, art department here at Cabrillo. I met Holt in, uh, in, at Cabrillo College. I was, I was uh, in the Navy and we were both in the Navy, I discovered later. I was a uh, bosun's mate at first and then a dental technician. We uh, worked with, in a lab with wax and molds and, and would cast uh, uh, teeth. And when I discovered at Cabrillo College while I was studying to be a dentist, uh, I saw this, this class going on and they were pouring you know, metal out of a big crucible into these giant molds. And, um, my eyes lit up and I just knew from that moment that I definitely had to do this. First meeting with Holt was back in uh, 1963. He had the uh, Martha Street Foundry and I was taking a class at San Jose State then with Leonard Stanley. And uh, one of the first pieces we did was a styrofoam piece that uh, they didn't have the facility at the time at San Jose State, but Leonard says the Martha Street Gallery uh, Foundry could uh, could pour these in aluminum. So this was a piece that was done there. One of the first projects I did in Holt's mold making class was um, shortly after the Loma Prieta earthquake in, that hit Santa Cruz and Watsonville very hard. Um, I knew of one of the building owners in the, that owned a building, the Letnich building in downtown Watsonville, and she gave me one of the broken pieces from her facade, and I took it in to Holt and said, asked if it would be a good course of study for his mold making class, and he said, yeah, let's give it a try. I eventually came up with this casting and presented this to the building owner, and she said, why don't you bid on doing the full restoration of the facade? And I said, I'll do that. And I was awarded the contract, and then I took his mold making class a second time, and we, I brought further pieces in, and we worked through those one at a time. Eventually, I did the full restoration on the building, and that was the beginning of my cast concrete business. My first uh, uh, class with Holt, um, very inspired by uh, Holt's work, and, uh, and how we worked with, uh, with oil clay, which we made in the class with, uh, we mixed oil and, and clay and wax and modeled our own pieces. And Holt's uh, work was, was very inspiring for me as a, as a Navy guy, because we used hardware uh, in rigging the ships and, and, and running lines. Uh, through the hardware, and Holt would take that hardware and he would make it a sculpture. I met Holt back in the 1980s. I had come to uh, come to this area to go to UC Santa Cruz, right out of high school, and uh, went there for four years and studied bronze casting there. 
And uh, me and a friend, once I graduated, we uh, opened a cafe downtown, a little Italian cafe called Donatello's, and we sold gelato. And after a couple of years, we decided it would be a good idea to take a, a business trip to Italy and got some advice to take a class out at uh, Cabrillo. They could uh, have Italian classes out there. And I'd also heard that uh, there was a foundry program out there as well. So I went out to Cabrillo and uh, signed up for Italian and met Holt Murray the same day. And um, he had just gotten back from Italy, as it turns out. And so uh, we had a lot of uh, a lot in common. That's kind of where we, the Bronzinis, began, I think, because uh, Holt was into uh, the Italian Air Force, which was always a humorous thing to do. Because to, to take bronze in marble and think of it flying, only in Holt's mind, it was such a magnificent thing happen. So we had this great fun. Sean and I first met in that first class, and, and uh, we, we began to uh, uh, add little uh, Italian phrases to the ends of things. And uh, I think that's where the Bronzini began. Italy had a great effect on Holt. You know, with the tradition of marble and bronze and, and great artwork through the centuries in Italy, really, uh, really came home for him. I mean, in a profound way. And um, so he began a series of work that uh, he called the Italian Air Force, and it were these sort of uh, fantastical allusions to the uh, to the to the beautiful form that you might see in Italy, translated to a contemporary you know images like airplanes, for example. And so uh, instead of sleek aerodynamic aluminum finishes, he worked with marble and terrazzo and bronze and got these beautiful, beautiful Italian forms or, or forms that uh, were gorgeous to look at even though they would never fly. But boy, did they look good. And, uh, and that's the important part after all. Holt had a, a what we started referring to it as his Italian dictionary for everything. And uh, we'd come into class and have uh, uh, something out of the Italian dictionary that he'd be talking about. And we always found a great deal of humor in that. He gave us nicknames. We were, uh, Del and Pizzoni became Del Zoni. Uh, uh, Steve Rizinski be, became uh, Stavinsky. And uh, that came about us uh, starting to call him Holteto. Reading Holt, right away it was very clear that uh, this is somebody who, you know, lived and breathed bronze. It was really, uh, you know, like his life and soul depended on it. Uh, you know, he had a way of making bronze casting seem like, a, like really a, a viable way of life, like, a, uh, like, an actual, uh, like an actual art form you could embrace. And for something that's so difficult, uh, it's, it's, <laughs> it's really critical. But for him it was really more than just an art form. I mean, it was, uh, I think I could call it a lifestyle choice. He was really serious about it. Actually, I, I found it was one thing he never really kidded about was sculpture. <laughs> he, was, he was really, uh, he was dead serious about that. And uh, he, uh, you know, he sort of lived for that process, uh, that physical and mental journey of discovery that uh, comes along with, with artwork and, and bronze casting. He was really committed to the medium and, uh, and, he, and he loved that material. And it was really clear that he just simply loved to uh, make and shape and hold and feel big, heavy things. Holteto uh, became a piece in my mind of bringing all these things that Holt started talking about. Uh, the Italian Air Force, which uh, I did this rather strange figure of Holt. It's a little head up here, his body. And these were all the parts that he talked about. He talked about the good fairy that uh, you always hope that uh, on a pour it came out, everything was with you. But if the bad fairy was there, sometimes you would have these problems of things that burn through and not fill in complete. He talked about uh, all these things that you gather up through your life that are your bucket full of uh, maybe knowledge, we started thinking, ah, oh, there's a bucket full of miracles that hope has for us. Uh, the spare parts pile, where you save all those things that are your vocabulary and sculpture, and they become part of whatever it is. This was just an idea of one of his uh, flying wings that is carrying on his shoulder here. And uh, as you can see, it uh, is 
nowhere near one of his, but uh, it was the idea of him. Of course, in his shirt pocket, he had all these pins and his three by five cards, his welding torches in his pocket, and uh, then uh, this piece became a piece that we gave to him on his uh, on his uh, retirement party. That was actually this side over here, which was. May 5th, 1996, when Holt retired, and it was celebrating the Bronzini. It inspired me at the time that, that, you know, I could go beyond the way I saw objects and I could actually transform them objects into an art form. And, and so that you could see that you knew what the object was, but it, was, it had been altered, it had been changed to give the viewer a, a, a little glimpse into the creativity of, uh, of the individual. Holt had a lot of interests through his life and among them were um, bamboo which was running rampant over his property and later he got into maple trees which he had a large collection of and was he, he delved into them very deeply. What other phases did he have? Oh, trains. He kind of embarked on a two-year project or more and made a very extensive train project and every phase he always delved into very deeply. He had a fantastic brain for such details. Holt and I would communicate on many of our trips either fishing at Sandbar Flat on the way to Beardsley Reservoir and Holt knew all the logging roads and he drove me maps and he had all his three by five cards and, <laughs> and, and detailed maps take five N R to here and then it was you know we meet down at the river and we fish and have really really some wonderful times and it was on some of these trips that we really connected on in many ways and other than through sculpture and about art but uh, through you know more metaphysical I, uh, I really, you know, began to think about Holt and reflect on all the ways he's influenced my life. And, uh, you know, whenever, whenever, uh, whenever I do anything, <laughs> uh, I'm reminded of Holt. In fact, I had a, a fellow come and work for me a few years ago who was from Italy, he worked in a, in a ceramics factory there. And uh, he had a great expression that he taught me that, uh, that he used and I thought was so apropos to Holt. He, uh, he told me, for those of you that speak Italian, he said, L'occhio vuole la sua parte. And uh, so what did that mean? And he said, well, in, in English, it's the eye wants its part. L'occhio vuole la sua parte. The eye wants its part. So, uh, you know, it should always look good. And, and those pieces in the Italian Air Force, yeah, they were bronze and, and terrazzo, and they were not going to fly, but, <laughs> but damn, they look good. And I think uh, there's something really special about this uh, card. He, uh, Love this clevis. You, you, you saw it, a shackle. And uh, he explained this to us once, and he said, you know, this is a universal connector. I, I will always, uh, I'll always remember Holt um, uh, for an expression he, he, he liked to use. When he was working on his, on his pieces and uh, um, getting, getting to that point where those, all those little rough edges were out and he was getting it where he wanted it, he called that a romantic manipulation of surface. He said it's kind of like your uh, your meter for your water your water meter. It connects your house to the whole water surface of, of the county. He says it's like your PGE meter, your electric meter. You know? That's a universal connector for him and his vocabulary in art. This was the connector, and uh, on his card. He has that. It's kind of like his portrait. He has connected us all together through his life. And that's what makes him so special. Thank you.